Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and I'm going to be Bible journaling a story from Noah, or at least a, a couple of verses from Noah. And it's kind of a time appropriate one because I have really been revisiting this story. My pastor had preached this years ago, and I, it's just been coming back to my mind from Genesis chapter 8. The water receded steadily from the earth at the end of the 150 days, that is five months. The water had gone down, and on the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The waters continued to recede until the 10th month, and on the first day of the 10th month, the tops of the mountains became visible. It still had to go down to the bottoms of the mountains. After 40 days, Noah opened a window he had made in the ark and sent out a raven, and it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. And it goes on, and there's the dove, and then they have to wait longer. Even when the ark sets down on dry ground, God still says, wait. He's the one who knows when it's time to go. And the patience and the obedience of Noah is just really powerful to me. My pastor had preached many years ago. He preached I don't, I think it was 10 or something sermons from the story of Noah. It was like a ridiculous amount week after week, just pulling out morsels of Noah's obedience and his patience. And that's what I need right now because we're at 40 days of shelter in place where I live. And that's a long time for me to do shelter in place, but I want to continue to be obedient. We're called to be obedient and that's what I'm, I'm working at. So I've drawn the six by eight, which is the size of my Bible page that I'm going to be cutting out of this, trimming it down. And I drew the little window in there and I'm just making the wood on the surface of the ark. I should have left room for the water. I'll show you how I added the water later at the end because you can still do that even if you mess up with watercolor pencils. But I added a medium brown, a red brown and a yellow brown because I wanted the wood to feel kind of natural and have a bunch of different color in it. So I'm just kind of scribbling the color on there, not really worrying too much about where it's gonna be around the window because I'm gonna be putting a lot of color in that, but I wanted to save enough of it that I don't just wipe across it and everything there would disappear. But when you use a baby wipe with watercolor pencils, you can use different amounts of pressure and see I can get leave more of the pigment on the paper by using lighter pressure or press harder if I want lighter wood. So it depends on whether you want to write with a white pen or a black pen when you do your lettering. So you can do lighter wood or darker wood so that your, your writing will be readable. And I'm going to iron in between a bunch of these different layers just so it kind of flattens out some. Paper never flattens 100%, but it'll flatten well enough. I've just got it on top of a pad of paper so that I have some cushion underneath of there. Don't uh, burn my paper or the paper that's on my desk. And if you're doing light wood, then just make a bunch of lines across it. I'm using this rolling ruler and they make ones for kids for school that are way cheaper than this one. This is a fancy one for sailors because I used to sail. And you can just make a lot of horizontal lines without measuring everything. You don't need to measure all these lines anyway because it's just boards. You just want it something to indicate that it's wood. So if you're going to use the light wood, then you would stop there, but I wanted dark wood. So I just started adding more and more color, picking some darker brown pencils, but the more layers you put on, the richer you can get the color to be when you're working with watercolor pencils, because there's no longer, since we've already spread that first layer out, there's no longer cream showing through. So that's one of the reasons why all this color on top just gets darker and darker, because you're not seeing any of that paper through it. This time I'm going to use super light pressure and I have the baby wipe kind of balled up so that it's almost skimming across the wrinkled surface and that's giving me a really cool wood texture and I'm just kind of wiping gently across it sometimes at a little bit of an angle if I need to fill in an area if there's a spot where I'm skipping over that kind of thing just playing around with it until it looks like what I want wood to appear like can press a little harder if you want to smoosh it out a little bit more that sort of thing and notice I'm not worried about the window I'm gonna be putting so much color in there I just wanted to leave the window open so I could see what I'm doing by the time I go to paint that section and then of course iron it again so it'll be relatively flat ish and the iron is just a regular old clothing iron 
it doesn't get used for clothing around here, uh, especially now since I kind of live in my PJs while we're sheltering. And uh, just for a couple seconds, I have it on high and just iron it quickly. Again, I'm going to put the boards back in with a dark pencil. And then I'm going to leave them. You can go over it again if you want to put more layers of color, but I'm just going to leave that pencil on the surface of the paper then. And then I'll draw the edges of the window in using the edges of the paper so that I get it kind of squared off and correct. And that way my window will be ready for me to dive in and do the drawing and the coloring in that little section. And uh, let's zoom in and see that. So the cup, you can make just a square cup with a little handle on it or even just a glass of milk if that's easier for you. And the person, I don't draw people really well, so just draw a little weeble. Remember the weebles wobble but they don't fall down? Just like a little play school toy. I just did a circle and then I put a colored shirt on myself so that I'm sitting there in the window waiting for the Lord to rescue me from shelter in place and just praying for patience. That's where I'm at right now because my state is still working through this. We are still fighting it and our authorities are trying really hard to knock this thing out so that we don't end up going back again in the fall. I don't want to do this again. I want us all to be successful at our sheltering and our social distancing so that this does not come back. They say it probably will, so we're going to have some extent of a fight with it. But if we can learn how to just muscle through and be patient and shelter when we're asked to do so, so that we can all move th through this quickly, I'm just going to continue to be praying over these coming months that we've learned from this, how to do this well, that we have come up with strategies that are going to help us get through the fall and that sort of thing until we have a vaccine and, and treatments and things for it. So a couple layers of pencil and just watercoloring through them again will help to darken that window. So it's just a, a really nice dark image in the center of my big, big kind of planks of wood. And I've trimmed it down so it's going to fit in my Bible. And here I wanted to put the water back in that I skipped earlier. Watercolor pencil lifts and lifting is just when you, you can remove the color. So I just wiped some of it off, wet it and wiped it off with the baby wipe and ironed it again. So I could then go in and add blue for the water. And I kind of even liked the fact that there's a little bit of the brown still left on the paper because it almost looks like there's a little bit of the wood showing through the water because there's that little bit of brown down there. I added some white foam on top and then just the journaling section. So you can decide if you're going to use this page, what are you waiting on? What are you waiting on the Lord for? Where is it that you can learn from Noah on how to be patient when he waited for so long, not just while he was on the boat, but he went through all kinds of, of time in the building of the ark. I mean, just go read the whole story. Just read the whole thing. When you're feeling impatient and you're done with this, go read Noah and ask Noah to teach you because man, oh man, that is, that is patience, I have to say. So I've put a prayer for patience there underneath of my little window and I'm going to continue praying. So I hope this was helpful to you. I hope you have a blessed and sheltered and safe and socially distanced day and week ahead. And I will see you again next week. God bless you and God bless your families. Stay safe out there.